I'm going to demonstrate how Chocolate San Papereño is made. That's hot chocolate from Bogotá, the capital of Colombia. Here we have Anoyeta. It's a staple in any Colombian kitchen. I have a molinillo, uh, a merge of tools from indigenous cultures and Spanish. There's Corona. And there's Sol. This one in particular has 50% less sugar and it comes in individual packages like this. And then there's, I'm gonna use this one that I already have open because we do hot chocolate here all the time. It's Chocolate Sol with sugar, which is the traditional type. And it has cloves and cinnamon. So this is how the pieces look like. The shiny stuff is the sugar. You can see the porous stuff all from the mixing. So this is cocoa mixed with sugar. And I think they put an emulsifier uh, made of soy with it. All right, so we're gonna turn on the stove. So, hot chocolate measurements. For every stick of chocolate, use one cup of water. The traditional, like the first original hot chocolate or chocolate mixtures were made with water. It was later in Europe that they decided to use milk. Uh, I grew up with half milk, half water, so that's how I'm gonna do it. So let's see about math. Two sticks means two cups. So I'm gonna put a cup of water in. <gasps> yeah, the pot gets hot very quickly. And one cup of milk. My stove is not a stove that I can control the heat very well in. So I am gonna see if I can lower it a little bit for a little bit, but um just make sure that it's very important that the milk doesn't get too hot too quickly or that uh, what you're heating up, either water, milk, does not get to the boiling point. While that is heating up, I'll talk about things that we eat with this. In Bogota, I just made arepas. And if you don't know what arepas are, Maybe next year for Viva, I'll do the program about arepas. Yellow corn. And there's cheese inside. Chocolate Santa Pereño. Always French style bread. Especially in the mountains, there's bakeries everywhere. A lot of corner stores have their own bakeries, so there's always fresh bread. And one thing that we do too is use what we call uh, calados which is a, I can only describe it as a thick pita because you can't find them here. I get the pita bread pieces and then I have a secret ingredient that I won't show until we're done here. So you can see it's steaming. I wait until it's steaming like that to put the sticks of chocolate. Let's see, here we go. That's always fun. And then with our trusted molinillo, I go in. I hope you can see that already the chocolate is melting with the heat and dissolving. And you start seeing the chocolate color. It smells so delicious. Okay, so why on earth and the Molinillo has these groups and stuff to do this. There's a song. Que bate, que bate, que bate chocolate. That's what they mean. If you've ever have heard that song. Que bate, que bate, que bate chocolate. So in Bogota, Bogota is 8,500 feet over sea level. 
So even though we're in the equator, we're by the equator, it's not hot. It's like Lake Tahoe in the spring. It rains all the time. It's sunny. It's like eternal spring, but colder, thinner air. And there's areas where it's so, so cold, so, so cold uh, that a cup of hot chocolate, oh my God, it's like perfect. So one of the secrets of good chocolate, hot chocolate is the frothiness. They say a good hot chocolate has frothiness. Well, I use 2% lactic milk and one glass of water and one glass of milk. So it's not gonna be that frothy, but if you want it frothy, you can always use whole milk and just whole milk. And for those who don't drink milk, um, you can use almond milk. That one so far has been my favorite. I've tried soy milk, not my favorite. I tried rice milk, but you can barely find rice milk these days. Um, but I haven't tried oat milk. So, and I wonder if goat milk would be good with this. You can always experiment. And... Okay, I think it's about to get too, too hot, so I'm gonna turn it off. One of the reasons you use an olleta, a long olleta, is because you're doing this. So it splatters. That's why you it, it has this groove right here. Oh my God, it's about to boil. I better turn it off. I turn it off, but I'm moving it from the heat. Um. So, I'm gonna let it cool a little bit. You don't want to drink your hot chocolate super hot because it'll totally burn your tongue. I'm gonna use my Recuerdo de Bogota mug. The secret ingredient for Colombian hot chocolate. Do you know what this is? Guesses, people, guesses. It's cheese. We put cheese in the hot chocolate. What? Yes, we put, hot, we put cheese in hot chocolate. Uh, this particular one is going to be mozzarella for me. That's what we use in this house. Um, in Colombia, I would use doble crema, which is a, it's literally double cream. It's, it looks like mozzarella, but it's super rich. And you'll see why we put cheese. Okay, I put four little squares. Actually, I want more cheese. <laughs> I'm gonna put that fifth. And I'm gonna pour. All right. One thing that happens if you let it cool is that it creates a film on the top, especially if you use um, whole meal. So one of the things that I do is I play around with a spoon. You are supposed to use a spoon when you drink hot chocolate because you want to enjoy it. All right. So. Oh, it's so hot already. Look at that. Look. I'm going to get it closer. For you to see, the cheese is melting. Mmm, so delicious. Uh, on that note, I think I'm gonna stop now because I'm gonna have my hot chocolate with arepas, pan francés or French bread, a baguette, basically, and eat a bread instead of calados because we can't find them here and have my hot chocolate with my kids i hope you have enjoyed this
Hello, my name is Ramses Escobedo. I'm a librarian and branch manager of the Excelsior branch. Today I'm going to show you how to make uh, Mexican hot chocolate. It's pretty easy. I have a couple of great helpers. My wife, Edith. Hello. And my mother. So, let me show the ingredients. Uh, it's pretty easy. So you can get either uh, Chocolate Abuelita or Chocolate Ibarra. There's always discussions among Mexican families as to which one's best. But we'll find out. We'll then try them both. At least we will here. Uh, and my mom brought some chocolate from my hometown in Mexico called Jerez uh, Zacatecas. And I'm going to actually add a little bit of this to the, the batch of hot chocolate I'll, I'll be making just because it's a little sweeter and I like it a little sweet. You will need four cups of milk, one, uh, one tablet of chocolate. Uh, uh, chocolate Abuelita does not have cinnamon as an ingredient. Uh, chocolate Ibarra is, I'm gonna use Chocolate Abuelita, so I brought uh, extra cinnamon so I can add a, a little bit to it. Today we're gonna be using a clay pot, a Mexican clay pot, olla de barro. And for these, you actually have to use a, uh, a gas stove, otherwise it will not work on an uh, electric stove. That's why I'm visiting my parents and my sister, because they have a gas stove. Hi, so I'm about to, to pour the last uh, cup of uh, milk that we need, the fourth one. You're going to have the fire at low, low to medium, but low, otherwise the, the milk is going to get the, uh, stuck. Uh, or you know, against the pot. So we're now we're gonna add uh, one stick of cinnamon. We're gonna add the chocolate abuelita. One whole, what do you call this unit? Tablet. One whole tablet. I'm gonna break it. Uh, it might be a little easier to dissolve. And as I said, if you like it a little sweeter, you can add some brown sugar, regular sugar, and in this case, I'm going to add two little blocks of chocolate jerezano, which is uh, pretty sweet, and I'm going to cover it. However, uh, remember that we're going to have to keep stirring until, until it's ready, so it doesn't uh, get stuck to the plate. So, I'll see you when it's boiling. Okay. Hello everyone. So now, as you can see, our chocolate is um, uh, it's boiling. So it's ready. So let me see. I want to show you. Sorry, all the movement. See the consistency is nice and brown. And so now, what I want to do is I'm gonna use this this which is called a molinillo to cool it down and also make it frothy. So, I'm gonna pause this for a second and I'll show you. All right, so this is a molinillo. This is what I'm gonna use to cool it down and make it frothy. Basically, you insert this in the chocolate and you start on like this. Can you see peek over? Oh, you see how it's getting frothy already? Oh, yes. Alrighty, as you can see, it's getting frothy already, so I'm gonna make it a little frothier and then serve it. So I'll show you when it's time to serve it. Hi, so we're done with our chocolate now. Comes the best part, which is tasting it. So I'm gonna be serving these to my parents. They're gonna be my testers. I would recommend to enjoy your hot chocolate. Can you get closer to the bread? With Mexican bread, we have all kinds. I don't know all the names of all of them, but we have conchas, Ojo de Buey, Mantecadas, Cortadillos, Yoyos, uh, Cochinitos, or cochin oh yeah, Cochinitos, uh, we have Polvorones, uh, among others. ¿Qué más me falta? I think, well, no, th those are some. You can go and ask uh, at your uh, Mexican bakery and they'll tell you the names. All right, so here it goes. Mm. 
Ma, usted, tómele. There you go. ¿Qué quiere, qué quiere de, de pan? No, una concha. ¿Esta? Uh -huh. Una concha para usted. ¿Usted qué quiere? Un yo-yo. Un yo-yo. ¿El ojo de buey o este? Este. De este lado. A ver, pruébale. Over there. Muy rico, muy dulce, le salió muy rico. It's, it's tasty and sweet. ¿No está muy caliente? ¿También? No, está muy bien. All right, and then uh, I'm going to show you some of the, the decorations we have. Mm -hmm. Mexican cheese, mix, uh, Mexican tamarind candy, the Wellin and other Mexican candy. My mom got some nice fresh uh, honey. This is Queen's uh, cheese. And this is guava cheese uh, from Mexico. These are from Mexico as well. Calabaza, which is pumpkin, and we have bisnaga, which I don't know what it is in English. Uh, dulce de, de, de leche. Cocada, which is coconut. Um, mechonas. Mechonas. Uh, and sometimes uh, when you have uh, a view, when somebody passes away and they have a view, um, They actually, in Mexico, they offer pan and hot chocolate, and sometimes you want to spike it with some <laughs> mezcal, mezcal or, or with some tequila, just FYI. Uh, we have a nice decoration of the Loteria, one of the most popular um, and older games in Mexico. It's like a board game. We have guitars. We have a yo-yo. Anyway, we try to make it look as authentic as we can. And it is. It tastes good obviously we're gonna try it right now so thank you to my dad he joined us to have some hot chocolate thank you to my mom thank you to my wife should you have any questions please feel free to uh ask me because we're gonna be doing this live um, so i hope you enjoyed it thank you